Section 9.6, solving equations with exponential and logarithmic functions. Some of the problems involving exponential functions can be solved. You can solve for x by matching the basis. For instance, when they say solve, remember solve means find x. 2 to the power of x is equal to 128. How do I know this is exponential function? Notice the x is sitting at the power. So somehow I need to figure out how do I rewrite 128 as a power of 2. So turns out, believe it or not, 128 is 2 to the power of 7. The minute you match the basis, that's what this method is called, matching the basis, then you can what? set the powers equal, and lo and behold, x has to be equal to 7. In other words, 2 to the power of 7 is 128 and checks. Sometimes you have 7 to the power of negative x, 1 over 49, but remember this is the same as 1 over 7 squared, 49. Put this on top, so that would be like what? 7 to the negative x equals 7 to the power of negative 2. Okay, you match the bases, so set the powers equal, so negative x equals negative 2, so x is equal to 2. Okay, what about 1 half to the power of x? Well, believe it or not, I can write that as 2 to the power of negative 1 to the power of x, and I can write 16 as 2 to the 4, but then I can multiply negative 1 by x, write this as 2 to the negative x equals 2 to the 4. I somehow managed to match the basis, so I'm going to set the powers equal. So it turns out negative x equals 4, so x has to be equal to what? Negative 4. Do you see it? 2 to the power of x plus 2 is equal to 64. Well, believe it or not, this is 2 to the power of x plus 2. This is 2 to the power of what now? Um, I believe it's 6. How do, I, how do I know that? It just so happens 2 to the power of 6 is 64. Do you see it? And again, I match the basis, so I'm going to set the powers equal. So that's x plus 2 is equal to 6, so x is equal to 4. Okay. Sometimes you have logarithmic function in your what? In your uh, equation, and the idea is solve. Then again, solve means find x. But then notice we have to check the answers. What they mean by checking the answers when it comes to logarithmic equations with logarithmic log logarithms in it, check and see if the logarand is not zero or what? negative number for your solutions. That's what they mean because logarand cannot be zero or negative. Do you see it? So to solve these kind of problems, immediately change them into exponential form. So x would be equal to 81 to the power of one half, which is the same as the square root of 81. So the answer is nine. However, if I put nine here, nine is a positive number. So it passes the smart check. So it's A-OK -okay to what? Claim that as an answer. What about this guy? Well, this guy is the same as what? Logorand, which is 5 minus 3x. B, which is 2 to the power of value of the log. Remember, what am I doing? I'm using this conversion formula. I'm going from this form to this form. Do you see it? Here, the B is 2. Here is the capital X, here's Y, okay? So this would be like five minus three X is equal to eight. So that's negative three X is equal to what? Three, so X is equal to negative one. Before I box my answer, I have to check and see if the logarand, what's inside this oval shape, is not zero or negative. If I put negative four, replace the X with negative one, Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. Positive 3 plus 8 is uh, 5 is positive 8. So it's okay. So it's not that we have to, we cannot get negative number. It's like what makes the logarand negative or zero. Sometimes there is no base for the log. 
So the assumption is if you don't see the base, the assumption is base 10, you don't see it. Just like radicals, when you don't see the index, the assumption was it was two. So for logs, when you don't see the base is 10. As a matter of fact, logs who happens to have a base 10, all right? happens to have a name, they are called common logs, common logs, okay? So once again, the logarand is 3x minus 8, the base is 10 to the power of value of the function, so that's 3x minus 8 is equal to 10, so 3x is 18, x is equal to 6, make sure it doesn't make what? This expression inside the oval shape, negative or zero, 3 times 6 is 18, 18 minus 10 uh, minus 8 is 10, so we are good to go. So that's what they mean by check. <clears throat> Sometimes you have to use the rules, what, in order to find x. And if you have logs, of course, we have to check the answer. So how do we do this? Remember, we have an addition. Addition comes from what? Product rule. So this guy is exactly the same as saying log of x times 5, which is 5x, base 2 is equal to 2. Now we convert this guy to exponential form. So 5x equals 2 to the power of 2. So that's 5x equals 4. So x is equal to 4 over 5. And make sure it doesn't make what? This logarand inside this circle here, 0 or negative. It doesn't, so it passes the test. Negative comes from what? Quotient rule. So you got to divide this guy by this guy. So that's going to be the same as what? This is going to be the same as a single log x divided by 5 base 2 is equal to 3. The minute you combine the logs, then you convert what? Logarithm back to exponential form. So in this case, that's x over 5 is 2 to the 3. So that's x over 5 is equal to 8. Cross multiply, x is equal to 40. And 40 doesn't make this guy negative, so it's good to go. <clears throat> Sometimes you have one log on one side, one log on the other side. Once again, if you don't see the base, the assumption is there's a base 10. OK. If that's the case, just like exponential function, if the bases match, what you have to do, if you have a single log on either side, what? Set these guys equal. You know, we'll set the lower ends equal. That means set what? x plus 2 equal to 3x minus 1, solve for x, provided what? You have the same bases. Okay, so in this case, it's negative 2x equals negative uh, what? 3. So x is equal to 3 halves, but make sure the expressions inside these boxes, they are not 0 nor negative. 3 halves plus 2 is positive. 3 times 3 halves, uh, which is what? 9 halves minus 1 is positive. So this guy passes the test. All right, sometimes you've got two logs on one side and a log on the other side. First, you have to combine the logs. Here is addition. So we've got to multiply these guys first. So that's going to be log of x times 6x minus 7. Base 4 equals log of what? 5 base 4. But now you got the same basis. So you got one log on one side and the other log on the other side. Set these guys equal just like previous problem. So this would be like saying x times 6x minus 7 is equal to 5. Okay, remove the parentheses, so that's 6x squared minus 7x equals 5. 6x squared minus 7x minus 5 equals 0. So now you factor this out. How about 3x, 2x? Let's see if this is going to work. 5, 1. That's 3x, that's 10x. How about, so this is 10x, that's 3x. I need negative 7. So I'm going to make this guy positive, make this guy negative. So let's see if this works. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. Positive 3x and negative 10x is negative 7x. And 3 times, 3x times 2x is 6x squared. Fantastic.
So set this guy is equal to zero. All right. So one of your answer is five thirds. The other one is X is equal to what? Negative one half. But the minute you stick negative one half here, that makes this logarand negative. Do you see it? So the negative one half goes out the door. So you only accept positive five thirds because five thirds, no matter where you plug it in or either of these logarands, is not going to make either of them zero or negative. So notice, even though I had two answers because I had a quadratic equation, I only had to accept one of them. This guy is what? Is a single log on one side and a number on the other side. So immediately changes to exponential form. So that's x plus 1 squared is equal to 5 squared, which is x plus 1 squared is equal to 25, correct? So if you take the what square root of both sides, you get absolute value of x plus 1 is equal to 5. Is that right? So that means what? X plus one is equal to what? Plus or minus five. So either X is equal to four or is equal to negative six. And both of these answers, even though I have a negative answer works here because negative six plus one is negative five, but square makes it positive. So this is a okay. Both of them are acceptable. The last one is log of x plus log of what? x minus 3. Notice once again, there is no base. So the assumption is you don't see it. They are base tens, correct? So <clears throat> how would I do this? Well, I just wrote the same problem in the next page because I don't think I can squeeze the solution here. So there it is, OK? First thing first, you got to what? Combine these two logs and write it as a single log using the properties. Addition comes from product rule, so you got to multiply these guys out. So the answer is the log of what? x times x minus 3 base 10 is equal to 1. So now change that to exponential form. x times x minus 3 is equal to 10 to the 1. So that's x squared minus 3x equals 10. x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0. Factor this out. So xx, how about 5, 2, negative plus. So either x is equal to 5 or equals negative 2. Is that right? But if you stick negative 2 here, that makes what? The lower round negative as well as here, negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. So this guy is out. So the only acceptable answer would be x equals 5. Do you see it? Right? <clears throat> so um, <clears throat> that's basically how we solve these guys. <clears throat> Let me just... Uh, um, sometimes you'll be asked to solve equations with exponential functions, but there is no way we can what? Um, match the basis. Notice there is no way I can write 11 as a power of 2. So these are the type of equations I need to use logarithmic functions, okay? The logs. So the saying goes, let's take the log of both sides. So that's what you do. You attach LOG to both sides of the equation. And make sure you take what base 10 because that's what you have on your scientific calculator. The reason we did that so we can what liberate the x, write it next to the log. So now I have x times log of what 2 base 10 equals log of 11 base 10. To solve for x, you divide both sides by log of 2 base 10. All right. And these guys cancel, so x is equal to log of 11 base 10 over log of what? 2 base 10. So it says right here, approximate the value of x accurate to two decimal places using the what? Logs. Okay, so what do I do? I kind of go, okay, parentheses, what? Log of, what was it? 11. Close the parentheses, divide it by, open the parentheses, log of 2, correct? Close the parentheses. 
So I would get 3.4, let's say six, rounded to the two decimal places, okay? Nine is what? Greater than five, drop it, add one to five. So it's 3.46 approximately. That's roughly equal to. All right, next one, <clears throat> three to the power of X plus two is equal to five. There is no way I can write five as a power of three. So I need to take the log of both sides. So that's what the saying goes. The saying goes, let's take the log of both sides. Okay, so attach the log and preferably make sure you choose base 10, all right? So why did I do that? So I can move this power and write it next to the log. So that's X plus two times log of three base 10 equals log of five base 10. So divide both sides by log of three base 10. Okay, like so. So you get what? X plus two equals log of five base 10 over log of three base 10. Okay, well, work that out. So what is it? Parentheses, log of five divided by, oops, sorry. Parentheses, log of five, close the parentheses, what? Divided by, open the parentheses, log of five three, close the parentheses. So I'm getting 1.4650. But wait a minute, there was a two here, so subtract two. Okay, so x is equal to negative two plus 1.4650. So um, subtract two, and I'm getting x is equal to roughly what? Negative 0.5, what? Four, two decimal places. Once again, there is a five here, drop it. Five is equal to five, drop this, add one here. So the answer is negative 0.54. Sometimes you have X on both sides. So once again, take the log of both sides like so, base 10, okay. So that would be like log of 10 to the power of X base 10. Okay, remove or liberate the powers. So you get X plus three times log of four base 10 equals what? X times log of what? 10 base 10. Is that right? <coughs> so what do I have here? Well, I'm gonna divide both side by X and then I'm going to what? Get x plus 3 divided by x times log of 4 base 10 equals log of 10 base 10, right? Then I'm going to divide both sides by log of 4 base 10, like so. These guys cancel, so I get x plus 3 over x equals log of 10 base 10, correct? log of 10 base 10 divided by log of 4 base 10, correct? So now I'm going to use the calculator. So I'm going to come up with, let's see what the calculator says. Log of 10 base 10, I know it's 1, but let's say I didn't know that because if the lower end matches the base, you should get 1, remember? So anyways, parentheses, log 10, Close the parentheses, divided by open parentheses, log four, close the parentheses. I'm coming up with X plus three over X equals 1.6610. Cross multiply, you get X plus three equals 1.6610X. Okay, so subtract X from both sides, you get what? three is equal to what? 0.6610X, because remember, this is like saying what? One point, what was it? 6610 minus one, that's 0.6610, right? 
So divide both sides by 0 0.6610. Okay, a lot of calculators, guys. So three divided by 0 0.6610. And lo and behold, the answer is x equals 5.4.5, I would say four, accurate to two decimal places. Once again, eight is greater than five, drop it at one. So how about 4.54 for the final answer? Finally, we uh, have a word problem that's compound interest. Remember the formula was A is equal to P times what? One plus R over N to the power of N times T. That's called compound interest. Let's see what the problem is. If Mary invests 600 bucks in a savings account, earning interest at a rate of 6% compounded semi-annually, how long would it take for 600 grow to 1800 bucks? So 600 is the principal, 1800 bucks is the accumulated amount or the future amount. Interest rate is 6%, which is this in decimal is 0 0.06. Semi-annually means what? Interest gets to be what? Compounded twice a year, every six months. So N is two. So we got to put what? Two for wherever you see N in the denominator and the power. Notice the catch is how long. How long means what? The time is missing. Okay. So time is missing. So when you have how long, that means the time is missing. So you replace the A with 1800, P with 16600, one plus 0 0.06 divided by two to the power of two T. Divide both sides by 1600 first, I mean 600. You get 1800 divided by 600 is three. Divide 0 0.06 by 2, you get 0 0.03. Add these guys up, you get 1.03 to the power of 2t is equal to 3. Take the log of both sides. Take the log of both sides. Okay, why would you do that? So you can liberate the 2t and write it next to its own log on the right side. Okay, so you're trying to solve for t, divide both sides by what? By what? Log of 1.03 base 10. So when you do that, you kind of go log of 1.03 base 10, log of, what did I say? 1.03 base 10. These guys cancel. So you get 2t is equal to log of 3 base 10 divided by log of 1.03 base 10. On your calculator, compute these two logs, you get 37.1670. Don't forget that was 2t, so divide this answer by two, Say so take half of this, and the answer is 18.58 years. That's how long it takes for what? For 600 bucks to grow into 800, provided interest has been compounded, what? semi-annually at the rate of what? 6%. Thank you. <clears throat>